Hello, guys. Nice to see you. How are you doing? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So, last time we uh, discussed um, distribution of molecules of ideal gas by speed and uh, according to Maxwell, uh, so-called Maxwell distribution and also distribution of their uh, concentration uh, in external um, potential field uh, according to Boltzmann distribution. So also if we apply both uh, these distributions together, so-called Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution, it tells us um, how many um, molecules are in uh, unit volume uh, at some given position in this external potential field and within this volume, uh, how many molecules would possess um, speed in the interval from V to V plus delta V. So both of this um, information uh, can be obtained by applying uh, Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. So today we uh, proceed further and uh, introduce second law of thermodynamics um, from uh, the point of view of heat engines. We will introduce also heat engines. Uh, consider heat pumps and refrigerators, like introduce them, define their performance. Uh, and uh, in details, we will discuss the um, working principle of uh, regular freon based refrigerator, that typical one which uh, everyone has um, in our kitchens. Uh, so I believe that would be useful to uh, go through it and uh, make sure that you have a good understanding of the main working principles of this device. Uh, this actually heat pump. <coughs> okay, let me switch to slides. So first we need to give the definition of a heat engine, which is some device that uh, operates in a cyclic process. It takes energy in form of heat from a high temperature reservoir, performs some work as part of this energy goes for performing um, work, and the rest is expelled to cold reservoir. So if we use some graphical representation, we can draw such a log diagram. So uh, this is our heat engine. It receives some amount of energy in form of heat QH from high temperature reservoir. Then it performs some work W and expels the rest of energy in form of heat Q, C, Q cold to cold reservoir. So that is the uh, like simple but uh, fundamental definition of uh, heat engine. So obviously work done by this heat engine is equal to the difference between uh, absolute values of uh, obtained and expelled uh, heat, means from high temperature reservoir and to uh, cold reservoir. <coughs> Uh, since the working substance of this uh, heat engine uh, changes uh, in a cyclic, like the parameters of this working substance changes, a uh, change in, in the cyclic process, um, and working regime is a cyclic uh, operation process of heat engine. Uh, then the set of uh, initial um, state parameters which define the state of the working substance 
um, is the same as the set of initial state of final state uh, parameters, uh, because since it's cyclic process, it uh, comes back to initial set of parameters. So they don't change, means that the uh, internal energy of this working um, substance also doesn't change. Delta U internal is equal to zero. So um, obviously there is a question about efficiency. If you have any um, heat engine, we want to know uh, and define um, efficiency of this uh, engine. So uh, efficiency E uh, is defined as uh, ratio of work done by this engine to amount of uh, heat it um, obtained from high temperature reservoir. Um, since we know that work is defined as difference between QH and QC, we can write QH minus uh, UC divided by QH. Or in other form will be unity minus UC divided by QH. Uh, and uh, our efficiency from this equation will be equal to unity, means 100% efficiency, uh, only when QC, uh, amount of heat expelled to cold reservoir, is equal to zero. Otherwise, this term will be larger than zero, and um, the overall efficiency will be smaller than unity. <clears throat> um, Based on our large background in experimental use of heat engines, we know that their efficiency is much lower than uh, unity, and uh, um, it's impossible to make any uh, heat engine with such um, high efficiency, even if we consider some ideal heat engine, which we will discuss in details next time um, during our next uh, discussion, uh, it's still much lower than unit. So we, we consider neglect with all possible dissipation of energy, um, it's still much smaller than unit. So um, the definition of uh, so-called second law of thermodynamics uh, in the form of Kelvin uh, Planck from like we are introducing the heat engine uh, sounds uh, as following. It is impossible to uh, realize a heat engine operating in a cyclic uh, process, uh, which converts all input energy into work. So um, this uh, option that all input energy in form of heat QH uh, is transformed in uh, work is impossible because some part of this input energy should be transferred uh, and, uh, to cold reservoir in the form of heat QC. So that is the uh, one of possible uh, formulation of uh, second law of thermodynamics. Um, if we take a look here on this heat engine, how it operates, we see that um, energy in form of heat is transferred through our heat engine from hot body to cold body. So from high temperature reservoir to cold reservoir <clears throat> or low temperature reservoir. Um, that is quite intuitive process. And that's what we kind of experience. We know that heat is um, transferring from hot to cold. However, with some of engineering uh, solutions, it is possible to realize uh, this process in the reverse. Means that we will take some heat from cold reservoir and transfer it to high temperature reservoir. Obviously, such process is not let's say, natural, and by itself, it cannot happen. However, if we perform 
external work on the system, then it can be realized. And it will look like fault. So in this case, it will be not heat engine, but heat pump, which takes energy in form of heat from cold reservoir, transfers it in form of heat to high temperature reservoir. And that is possible when external uh, work is done on this system. So that is heat pump. Um, or uh, could also be considered as um, refrigerate. So we can cool down already cold body even further while transfer um, heat uh, energy in form of heat to um, hotter body with higher temperature. So without work, this cannot be done. That will violate the um, second law of thermodynamics. And that's another um, formulation of second law of thermodynamics. We are uh, considering the heat pump. So it's impossible to design a cyclic machine, the only effect of which would be um, the transfer of energy from uh, cold body to hot body without uh, doing work on this system. So work has to be done in order to realize such process. Obviously, if we have some heat pump or refrigerator, we also want to know uh, to define somehow its performance. We want to have a high performance system in order to um, realize this purpose of cooling something or heating something um, with a high efficiency. So in this case, um, there is a introduced parameter, so-called coefficient of performance, uh, COP. And since heat pump can work in um, different modes, it can cool down, then it's more like refrigerator, or <clears throat> it can warm up also. So um, depends on applications we will consider. So cooling down, let's say COP of cooling, that is quite uh, standard application. We have these refrigerators in our uh, kitchens and uh, uh, they cool down our food uh, and expel this uh, heat to uh, hotter uh, environment, our uh, like room temperature. So uh, in that case, we define COP for cooling as um, QC, amount of heat which was taken from cold reservoir, um, to work which has to be done. Uh, <clears throat> another option when we have COP of heating. That defined as QH divided by ohm. So it means how much heat we uh, provide to high temperature reservoir divided by normalized by mm, amount of work we need to perform in order to do this. So uh, if with cooling is quite uh, straightforward example, uh, our refrigerators, but what about heating? Uh, like heat engine, heat pumps, which are working for heating. Do you um, know some examples which can be quite common on nowadays uh, where we use it, uh, heat pumps for, for heating? So we can heat actually our living environment, our apartments or homes with uh, heat pumps and uh, um, how it works. Um, we consider cold reservoir as environment, like external environment, which uh, let's say something minus five degrees Celsius. Uh, that is some average temperature in a winter average winter temperature in some moderate climate, unfortunately not no sultan climate, but 
uh, there are many places on Earth where this is quite normal average temperature, winter temperature. And then we have high temperature reservoir. Obviously, we want to stay in comfort. Let's say we don't want to have less than 20 degrees Celsius in our uh, living environment. So we have cold reservoir and hot reservoir. Our idea is to take energy from in form of heat from cold reservoir and transfer it to uh, warm up our internal environment, uh, high temperature reservoir. Uh, sounds kind of uh, interesting and natural, but by performing some work on this heat pump, we can um, do this. And at these conditions, when we have external temperature minus five degrees, COP for heating will be something about uh, four. What does it mean? It means that we will um, gain in amount of energy which we put in our living environment in form of heat um, by a factor of four with respect to what we spend to perform to make this heat pump running. So if we have power of our heat pump, some engine which performs work of one kilowatt, we will get in heat inside our uh, living environment, uh, four kilowatt power of heating, which is definitely a good deal because if we just directly use um, electric heater uh, without heat pump, um, we will get just one kilowatt. Whatever we put there, we will get out in terms of heat. But with heat pump, we can gain uh, quite a lot. And uh, um, that is uh, profitable for overall to, to save money for uh, heating your house or apartment. However, there is one issue here. Because if we model another condition, when we have something like 20, minus 25 degrees Celsius, which is uh, more common for Nur Sultan, and we still want to keep 20 degrees Celsius in our apartment, obviously, uh, then the amount of the, the internal energy of this cold reservoir, our cold environment is so low that it is literally not much to take from it. Uh, so performance, like COP of such uh, heating pump under these extreme conditions when we have very cold um, temperature outside uh, drops significantly. And at some point, it doesn't make any sense to use it because uh, our gain is negligibly small and we still need to invest quite a lot into making such heat pump. So uh, performance of, of heat pump definitely depends on the temperature of cold reservoir, but for moderate um, climate, um, this. Uh, temperatures, average temperature of minus five degrees Celsius provides quite a good deal with uh, COP equal uh, four. Uh, <clears throat> so that's about um, heat pump. And uh, now I would like to focus our uh, attention on uh, um, working principle of a classical Freon-based refrigerator, which we uh, commonly use in our uh, kitchen. So uh, we will start from two main building blocks of a refrigerator. So the first one is evaporate. And the second one is condense. So any ideas what will be uh, our freezer? I mean, the, the area 
where the lowest temperature is maintained, uh, will it be part of evaporator or part of condensed? So you mean where where the lowest temperature will be on whether yeah. it is on condensation? Or, oh, okay. So what answer? I think it's condensation in the lower okay. part. Okay. Uh, I see some rational uh, thinking in your answer, but you don't take into account that we deal with some special working substance, which is freon. Freon is uh, such an interesting material. There are different types of freons, and that's why we will not specify exactly uh, some pressure and temperature, boiling temperatures, because they can vary plus minus, but some average we will, some average values we will provide. So Freon has very, first of all, it has very strong um, dependence of boiling temperature and pressure. So water also has, but not so extreme. So at low pressure, uh, boiling temperature <coughs> of Freon is minus 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, that is very low temperature. So at very low temperature, it starts to boil. Uh, what does it mean? Boiling is the phase transition from liquid to vapor that consumes energy. It doesn't happen by itself. It needs some energy in form of heat to be provided to this uh, liquid freon in order to realizes phase transition. <clears throat> like water boiling in the pot, you need to spend energy to, to make it boiling there. But water boils at, at normal conditions at 100 degrees Celsius and Freon boils at minus 20 degrees Celsius. That's by the way, one of the reasons why in kitchen refrigerators, we have um, a common temperature is uh, minus 18 degrees Celsius. Uh, because if, let's say, we use type of freon with boiling temperature minus 20 degrees Celsius, so that's absolutely the lowest temperature which can be possible. Uh, so it's usually a little bit higher, so it's something like 18 degrees, minus 18 degrees Celsius. So actually, evaporator is our freezer. If you open the freezer when it doesn't work, you will see that it has some metal framing and everywhere there's some snakes of, of pipes. So we have some pipes inside our freezer. And here inside these pipes, we have Freon at low uh, pressure and low temperature. So what happens when we, uh, low pressure means that boiling temperature is minus 20 degrees Celsius. What happens if we put some food in our freezer? Uh, obviously, it is warmer than minus 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, and uh, otherwise, why do we need to put it there? So it will provide some energy in form of heat to this metal frame of the freezer and these pipes, which are going through this metal frame. Uh, that energy will be absorbed by, will reach the liquid uh, freon at low pressure inside the system. And its boiling po uh, point is minus 20 degrees Celsius. Obviously it will start to boil because temperature of this food is high. So it starts to boil, means it takes energy from environment, which is internal volume of evaporator of our freezer, 
in order to um, realize this phase transition. It takes energy. It doesn't happen by itself. So it cools down the, the volume of our freezer. And uh, it converts from liquid to uh, vapor phase. So then we need to do something important in order to make this system work. When it absorbs energy, cool down our products, the vapor of freon goes to one of the most important part of this freezer, uh, like refrigerator. This is compressor. So what does, uh, what is the purpose of this uh, compressor and what it does? So here, as you remember, we still have uh, low pressure and low temperature. So this vapor goes uh, to uh, compressor. Main purpose of compressor is to increase pressure, make from low to high. That's the purpose of any compressor. And also automatically it will increase uh, temperature. <clears throat> so after compressor, so the idea is that it just pulls uh, some vapor from this area uh, inside this device compressor and uh, accumulates it there and pushes at high pressure and high temperature already uh, after it. So here we have high pressure and high temperature. Uh, this high temperature is something about 50 degrees Celsius. Uh, However, we remember that um, the boiling point, uh, the boiling temperature has very strong dependence on pressure. And since we have high pressure here, the boiling temperature of Rion is something 30 degrees Celsius. So means that it still remains um, in vapor state, uh, because its temperature is high, it's 50 degrees Celsius. So it's not liquid, Rion. What we want to get, we want to get it in liquid form in order to provide it further into our evaporator. Because that uh, comes from the name. Something should evaporate there. And if it's not in liquid form, how it can evaporate? So for that purpose, it goes into condense. So after compressor at high temperature and high pressure, it goes into condenser, some another snake of uh, pipes, which is located on the back side of the freezer. If you check at the back side of the freezer, like not like freezer or refrigerator, doesn't matter. <laughs> because it can be also just freezer, but the working principle is the same. Uh, you will see some metal grid, some pipe going through all this metal grid, and it will be warmish. It will not be hot, but will be warmish. It's another reason also um, why uh, there is a requirement to have some gap between the backside of the uh, refrigerator and the wall. You need, need some air uh, convection there in order to cool down uh, Freon uh, to room temperature, uh, which comes from, out from compressor uh, to room temperature uh, when it just goes through this pipe and interacts with the um, uh, air in inside the room. So let's say um, because of this cooling down inside the condenser, um, it goes to 
or something like 25 degrees Celsius. When it cools down below this 30 degrees Celsius, because we have high pressure, uh, it starts to condense. And uh, uh, eventually, at the bottom of um, this condenser, we will have already liquid uh, freon. So now we have liquid freon and we want to supply it to the um, evaporate. So there is a pipe which uh, at some point goes to a very narrow pipe called capillar. And then it goes to evaporate. This capillar is needed in order to provide very small amount of liquid freon into this uh, like part, uh, which is called evaporate. Uh, let's say, um, can you tell me what is the reason for that requirement? Because you may think in a different way. Say, why do we need to limit access of this liquid freon into evaporator? We can provide more um, liquid freon in evaporator. It will evaporate faster, like, more, like per unit time, more freon will evaporate, means that we will be able to realize more uh, like, like faster cooling of the products put in the freezer. So the cooling will be faster if we provide more um, freon per unit time in the evaporator. Um, but that is not what is needed. And can you have some, provide some uh, suggestions? What is the reason for that? Um, to be honest, I don't know. I don't have any clue. Okay, that's fair enough. Any other suggestions? Okay, so we mentioned at the beginning that uh, in order this thing to work, in order to have this low temperature boiling point, we need low pressure. If we provide a lot of uh, liquid freon inside this evaporator per unit time, then it, a lot of this freon will evaporate. So we will generate a lot of vapor and our compressor will not be able to uh, consume all of this vapor in order to uh, convert it from low pressure to high pressure. So it means inside this uh, region, inside the evaporator, and these pipes from evaporator to compressor, pressure will increase. If pressure increases, the boiling temperature decreases. Sorry, not decreases, but it also increases. So it will be not minus 20, but it will become something like minus 10 degrees Celsius. So uh, we will not be physically able to reach this temperature of working conditions, minus 18 degrees Celsius. Uh, that's why um, a lot of uh, freon cannot be, like liquid freon cannot be provided inside the evaporator. It should be provided with very limited uh, portions, like some kind of drops that is possible only through a very narrow pipe uh, capillar, which is calculated in the cross section in, the, in order to get the appropriate rate of injection of liquid freon in the operator. Another thing that uh, which you also need to um, realize that you cannot put hot um, pot with some uh, soup in your freezer because that will cause very active evaporation of um, even small amount of uh, freon provided in this uh, evaporator. And uh, uh, again, it can increase pressure 
because of extremely high um, rate of evaporation, uh, which will lower the boiling, the, uh, which will increase the boiling uh, temperature and um, will uh, realize some not appropriate functioning of your refrigerator. So it should be pulled down to room temperature and then further you need to put it to be cooled down uh, to lower temperatures. Um, <clears throat> so this process repeats cycle by cycle. So again, this liquid um, freon evaporates, goes back to the compressor, uh, goes through condenser, condensed, this, condensed and then um, provided by small portions again to evaporate. So that's the working principle of uh, uh, refrigerator. And uh, there are two key elements here. First of all, we need uh, this freon, which is which possesses very unique properties and what realizes in this strong dependence uh, of boiling temperature on uh, pressure. Uh, and also, of course, compressor, because this is a, in general, definition heat pump. It can be realized, uh, like it's, its functioning can be realized only when we externally perform work on the system. And that is what is done by this compressor. Without compressor, obviously, this would not uh, happen. Uh, this work will not happen. So um, uh, it can work only with compressor in, in order not to violate um, second law of thermodynamics, which we actually introduced um, during uh, our discussion today. So if you have any questions, you are welcome. I believe that this um, discussion of um, working principle of refrigerator uh, is useful because from my point of view, uh, people who took general physics thermodynamics should understand basic principles of its functioning, uh, even if physics is not your major. Uh, kind of very basic thing which should have understanding what it is and how it works. Uh, okay, then. Uh, thank you very much for attention. Hope to see you during our next discussion on Friday. Take care and have a good day. Uh, thank you. It was quite understandable. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. Cool. Thank bye you. bye. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.